Hi, this is Fresh Waves, and I'm your host, Bren Masson. Today on Fresh Waves, we're going to be talking about gifts that are outside the box, unusual, different ways of thinking during the holiday season. And that will entail thinking a few seasons ahead to next summer and what your loved ones might want next summer. Hey, why not give it to them now so they can enjoy it for next summer? Before we start that, though, I'd like to think in the box. And by that, I mean, I'd like to talk to you about some of the games that I love to play. Board games in a box. Board games make a great gift for a family. And I know when you start buying for cousins and um, family friends and things like that, it can get really, really, really expensive. And in this day and age, when things are getting overly expensive, why not buy one gift that will service the entire family? So there are some really fantastic board games. And of course, there are the staples. There's the Monopoly and Sorry, Candyland, all those kinds of games, snakes and ladders even, and traditional card games. Some of them have been boxed differently, like Wizard, which is a game we used to play all the time when we were kids. And we just gave it a different name. Someone put it in a box, added a couple of different cards and called it Wizard. Wish I'd thought of that myself. But I'm thinking more of newer board games. So I'd like to just suggest some of my favorite board games. Now, one of my favorites, and it's become a huge family favorite, is Wingspan. Wingspan is a fabulous game. If you find it, snag it because they often run out of them at Christmas time. Now, this is a wonderful, wonderful game. And I must say that it's it crosses all kinds of social barriers and religious barriers and cultural barriers because it's about birds. And it's beautifully illustrated. The game is absolutely fabulous. The pieces are so well made and it is a lot of fun. You learn interesting cool facts about birds and when I started playing I can honestly say that the first two times I played I didn't like it. I thought it was so confusing but most board games are confusing and not very likable the first time around. However, as I played this game I just found it to be absolutely fascinating. Each card has an illustration of a bird, and each card has a fun fact about that bird. I wouldn't recommend this game for young kids, but maybe 10 and over, it's a great game. And each time you play it, it's completely different because you have different cards. There's an expansion pack. Actually, there's two expansion packs that go with the game. So if someone you know already has the game of birds, think about buying them the expansion packs. It really is a fabulous gift. Now, another favorite of mine and my family's is Catan. Again, it's not for little kids. Catan is a great game for um, the older teenager and adults. It was a hit a few years ago with the university crowd and was also a hit over COVID with many, many, many people being locked in their houses. What better thing to do than to pick up a game like Catan and, and play? It really is a fun game. Lots of strategy and world building, and it's a it's a really fun game. Another game that I really like is Dominion, and Dominion's more of a card building game. You you, I don't know. It's really complicated, but it's a lot of fun. So check out Dominion as well. One of my ultimate favorite family games is Ticket to Ride. Now Ticket to Ride can be played by all ages. I think kids as young as six or seven could play Ticket to Ride. You collect um, destinations and you try and get to your destinations by placing trains on the board. It's a whole lot of fun and there are tons of different add-on games like Europe, like Switzerland, India, all these different games. North America is the basic game. And then on top of that, you can buy all these different versions of Ticket to Ride. So if someone you know has Ticket to Ride and they love it, think about getting one of the other Ticket to Ride games available that they may not have. Europe is a 
more complicated game than Ticket to Ride North America. So just keep that in mind if you're if you're thinking of purchasing it. And if you are thinking of purchasing Ticket to Ride, make sure that you start with a basic game instead of starting with the European one. Another game that's become a family favorite of ours through the pandemic, because we are a big board game playing family, and three of my four kids are now living at home, is Codenames. Codenames is a fabulous game. It is not a game for someone who's not in the mood to think. It is a thinking game. You play in teams. There are cards laid out on the table. As a matter of fact, let me get my daughter Sarah to explain to you how you play Codenames. So it's kind of like a battleship. Um, it's like a battleship grid, uh, but they all but they're all cards. It's a five by five grid on the table, and it's all different cards that have one word. And so there are going to be two teams, and there is the spy master of each team will sit with the other spy master of the other team, and they'll look at a card that shows a pattern of red and blue squares associated to the grid on the table. Um, the red team has to get their red teammates to guess the words that are laid up all with their pattern while the blue team does the same for the blue colors. And there's one black card that if any team guesses it, they're immediately out. So this game, you're not going to be able to play with two people. You each take turns. The spy masters take turns giving a one word clue and then a number. So for example, if three of my cards were associated with animals, I could potentially say like mammal for three. And then the teammates of my color will try and think, okay, which ones on the board does she think are mammals or associated with mammals? And there's three of them. Right. That was a piece from a podcast that we did during the pandemic. Sarah and her friend Dylan came on to Fresh Waves and talked about the games that they really enjoyed. You can go to our YouTube channel, Fresh Waves Radio, and hear both part one and part two of that series of board games. Um, Sarah goes into some pretty specific details on a bunch of games, and when you hear them, you may think, huh, that sounds like an interesting game and one that I should check out. So, We have a lot of different topics on Fresh Waves, and they're all there for you to uh, listen to on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. We love to have subscribers. For the rest of the show today, we're going to talk outside the box. We'll get out of our board games and out of traditional sounding Christmas gifts and into some interesting summertime gifts. Our guest today is J.D. from Maui North. Maui North is a Canadian company that design and make paddle boards and windsurfing boards and all kinds of summer fun activity things around paddle boarding and windsurfing. J.D.'s very, very knowledgeable. We'll give you his information at the end of the show so that you can contact him if one of these gift ideas strikes your fancy. If you've never thought of paddle boarding before, I suggest that you check it out. It's a really fun sport, and it gets you outside in the sunshine in the summer in Ontario. Thanks for joining us today, and now we're going to get on with our Outside the Box show. Normally, we think of getting gifts that are suited for the season, and by that I mean snowboards, skis, toboggans, sleds, All of those are fabulous ideas. There's even the indoor games for this time of the year, board games and things like that. But something that you may not think of at this time of year is getting a gift for next summer. And a lot of the big box stores will tell you, oh, no, 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 you can't buy a life jacket at this time of the year because that's seasonal and it's for next season and we don't bring those out until April. And It's a little frustrating and you don't have to have summer to think about summer. I like to think about summer all year round. So today we're going to talk with JD about the possibility of getting someone a summertime gift. Good morning, JD. Welcome to Fresh Waves. Morning, Brenda. Thank you so much for calling and and reaching out to us. Well, you know, sometimes in the bleakest of winter days, I have these daydreams. I look out the window, and if you don't look at the ground, and you don't look at the trees that don't have any leaves, if you just look at the blue sky, you can conjure up a summer day on the lake, on your paddleboard. So I thought, 
hey, what a great gift. If someone's looking for a gift idea and they just are lost, you know what? A paddleboard to me is the best Christmas gift ever. I totally am on board with that. We are the masters of gift giving when it comes to Christmas, especially. Can you imagine us lugging around a, uh, shall we say, a larger item like a, a sailboard and hiding it? <laughs> well, someone's trying to conceal the gift from uh, a spouse or partner or, or, you know, family member. It's too much fun, really. I feel like Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, you can do that thing where instead of putting it under the tree, you could actually put it in a different area of the house and put a small gift under the tree with a little note in it that, that sends them on a scavenger hunt. And, oh, in, yeah. and in the end, they open the door to a closet and there it is. Yes, it, it is way too much fun. The stories I could tell you when we're, we're concealing these things, uh, it's really a joyful part of Christmas and, and people are into it. I mean, you're talking about summer and frankly, it's endless summer here always at, at Maui North. Um, yeah, I mean, you may not know it, but we're open seven days a week from eight in the morning till midnight. And we've been doing that forever. So, really? That's a long yep. day. Yep, it is. Even throughout the whole COVID and lockdown process, we were totally here on board with our clients. and We, oh, we were busy, let's put it that way. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about um, the boards that people could get for someone. Obviously, if you have a loved one who is an avid boarder and wants to upgrade their board, Yep. That's probably something where you should do a little hunt and find first, a little sneaky research, um, kind of asking them what they're looking for in a new board, because these people are the ones who know what they're talking about and know what their needs are. But for someone mm -hmm. who is just starting out, it's a recreational thing, and you thought, you know, last year they mentioned how much fun that looks like, and they'd love to try it, and so let's get them an introductory board what are they looking for in a good introductory board uh well you raised some really good points there uh people should be concerned about what they ride um that's what we're here for whether a client a prospective client comes in buys from us or not doesn't matter we would really prefer to go out of here at least fully armed with uh, good insights and knowledge about board selections and processes so that's you know certainly step one we're very consultative um Quite often we'll see clients by appointment only. It's not uncommon for someone to spend an hour here just going through it because there is actually a lot to convey. And when you're shopping online, and and I get it, um, I could prattle on about it, but you know, through that the whole COVID process, global markets were having difficulties. So frankly, people jumped on the bandwagon, starting producing stuff that had never been produced before. They've never done it. And um, frankly, some of the, well, less desirable products were hitting the market. And that experience has unfortunately been conveyed to uh, you know, see people that aren't invested in, in the field like we are. We're heavily invested. And every board we have works. It's designed to, to fit that niche. And that's where we like to match up the client to the board, whether that's an inflatable board or a hardware, and that's one of the big questions. Hey, JD, what do I need, a hardboard or an inflatable? Um, we pioneered the inflatables in 2010. Um, good ones uh, can last a long time. They certainly serve a role, fit a function that's really, really good, and they're affordable. Hardboards are nice. They're a little more um, defined in terms of <clears throat> what elements you can take them in, but they're also considerably more expensive. So it's a longer consideration looking at one of those. And, you know, they can break. So there's repair to consider. Um, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a mix when it comes down to those two board types. Um, avoiding, um, shall we say, entry level products is probably a good idea as tangible as some of those savings may be. They're really not that great. You, you're going to end up spending the same amount of money for a quality board if you make the right selection. And, you know, frankly, we don't see our clients for like six years because guess what? They're out riding, <laughs> enjoying their board. They're not coming back going, hey, I need to have this fixed. Uh, and that is such a joy for us uh, because for us, it's all about the experience. It's not just vlogging product and, you know, making sales. It's really lining up that right selection for the user or the, to be a user group, family, individual. 
And we've got mm. some great boards here, really great shapes. Well, I have to say that I started paddle boarding 10 years ago. And um, one of the things that I noticed, and I noticed this with almost every sport, if you go to a big box store and you buy a really low-end piece of garbage, for the most part, piece Mm -hmm. of equipment, and you go out and try it, you can be very turned off by any sport. I mean, my dad used to shove magazines down our shins and put other magazines up our sleeves to give us padding so that we could go to the local arena in a pair of used skates that were about 30 years old. Mine were made of kangaroo hide, if you can imagine that, and then stick us on the ice and come back and get us in three hours. Well, first of all, in three hours with the skates that I was wearing, they were, uh, my feet were frozen and I was not having fun. You can't (laughs) skate when you can't bend your knees and you don't have fun when your arms are sticking out like a snowman on either side of you. Oh my God. And I can say I hated the pond experience for a good number of years until I took control of my own situation at an older age, got skates that kept my feet warm, got rid of the magazines and the shin pads as shin pads and elbow pads. And now I was out on the ice having fun and thinking, you know what, this is a great sport and I've enjoyed my morning out on the pond. So you really do need to do a little bit of research and get a good piece of equipment. I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy the best board unless you have a budget that that allows you to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. You don't need the best board on the market. As a matter of fact, as a beginner, that's probably not the place you start at. But in the same sense, don't start with a piece of garbage because I never like to buy things twice. And that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to use the garbage, either never paddleboard again in your life or realize Mm -hmm. that it's a piece of garbage and go out and buy another one. And then you've wasted your first sometimes $500 or $400 on a piece of garbage so that you can go out and spend a little bit more and you would have had a better product to begin with. Is that right? True enough. Oh yeah. You know, and and I love that, that pond skating story. I mean, who hasn't gone through that? (laughs) Yours is classic. I love it. Oh my God. I'm going to remember that one day. Uh, But you know, you're, you hit it right on the button. Uh, That experience certainly happened. We see, see clients come through, uh, they, oh my God, I made a mistake. Uh, and we don't beat the drum and say, well, yeah. And then with our demo centers, um, we have quite a few right across Canada, five in Ontario, where we encourage people to come out, try the boards. We make it a lot of fun. Um, so people can try, not just you know speaking with us, but they can actually get the experience and go, I get it. I see why this board works and why it's so different. We invest in that because it's all about the experience. Um, mm-hmm. And paddle boarding, like any other sport, is is an experience and uplifting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> without, you know, the cold feet, hopefully. Okay, uh, so if you're starting with a, an introductory board as a <laughs> gift for someone, mm-hmm. uh, what, what price range are you looking at? Um, well, you, you may know we're shapers, designers, builders. We manufacture boards. Um, we're all over the globe. Uh, typically, and we price things uh, relative to market and certainly the value. So we have adult board packages starting at $499. They go up in $100 increments. So $499, $599, $699. Anywhere in between there and $899, you're, you're walking out of here with it totally awesome board that will last, perform, not going to be looking over your shoulder, um, looking for anything better. You're going to max it out for, well, almost a decade, or if not mm-hmm. longer, yeah. Uh, yeah. and not feel the need to, to switch it up. Uh, certainly if someone t- takes that level of, of entry-level experience, which is really broad in this case, mm-hmm. and go, hey, you know what, I feel like charging some waves and getting into the surfing component. That's a step up, certainly, that a lot of people say, hey, JD, I'm never going to surf my board. That's not my plan. Until they feel that little wave under them. And go, <laughs> oh, hey, that was fun. Yep. And the story, the stories I could tell you about clients that so many times I've heard that. Hey, listen, I hear that all the time. It could be two weeks, six months, two years later. I said, JD, you remember that conversation we had about me not surfing? Well, guess what? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was at wherever, and they caught that first wave, and they became addicted. So, I, I I'm like, laughing because I saw you earlier this year, um, back in the beginning of July, just after my family went through a wicked bout of COVID. And Ouch. I had said to you, I was choosing between two boards. They were both inflatable. They were both similar in um, quality and performance. But the one had that kick plate at the back where you could anchor your heel if you were going to surf. And I thought, you know what? I'm probably going to be doing more still small lake stuff. And I don't think I'll ever surf. And I think, you know, okay. I could use that spot to put my head or something if I'm doing yoga on the board, which I do. And um, I decided against the red one, which actually I really liked. But anyway, I decided against it because I thought, I'm never going to surf. And two weeks later, I'm at a ladies' weekend in Georgian Bay. And I'm looking at that surf thinking, damn, I wish I had a board I could <laughs> surf with. <laughs> There you go. Right? Uh, um, yeah. We, we do try to address that. That's why we're so consultative. I mean, where are you now? Where will you be? What, what kind of profile, what kind of rider might you be or, or the members in your family? A and make that selection so that it's already built in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can broaden that experience. Uh, it doesn't cost you anymore. It's really just a matter of. No, it was uh, a definitely, they were both the same price. It was just a matter of which board I wanted. In the end, exactly. I think I made the right decision. But, you know, if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy a board that I can surf with on Georgian Bay once a year. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see you back in the shop. That yeah, cool. maybe. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned family, and that's another interesting thing. A gift like this, which is, you know, expensive it's not a, it's not an inexpensive gift that's for sure in my definition anyway um what about a board that can service the whole family is there yep. such a thing oh yeah absolutely uh uh weight the weight grouping of, of of the riders is is one of the first things we address and um um, inflatables are very generous in that capacity, unlike a hardboard, let's put it that way. Hardboard has to be much more specifically matched to the rider weight, paddling locale, abilities, and that type of thing. Uh, whereas an inflatable, properly designed one, we're not talking about some of the other things you're referring to, uh, or those other types, um, properly designed one will carry a very broad weight range, meaning little rascals right up to Uncle Bob, who's whatever. 350 pounds, something like that. Yep. So very broad, uh, which is really great because anybody, including all the family members, guests, whoever might show up, can jump on that board and have fun. They're, they're not going to be having an awkward moment, uh, depending on their skill set, of course, but in terms of not being able to float them or, or, or that type of thing, they're covered, which is really good. So I... Uh, uh, a family board in that capacity typically would be, you know, more like 11, 12 feet if you're thinking of a heavier group. Um, if you're thinking of a mid-range uh, weight grouping, boards 10 foot 6, 10 foot, maybe even 11. Uh, and then the shorter profile boards would be ones that are more agile, shall we say, uh, for a younger rider um, or if you wanted to do some of that wave work that we're referring to. Um, that could be swells or any things that are a little more progressive in terms of natural wave shape, which typically we don't really get waves per se, if you think about ocean compared to lake here on, in Ontario, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I know that you have a really big inflatable board. What is the name of that board? Uh, <laughs> it's actually called the monster for real. <laughs> uh, uh, when we design that one, you know, sometimes you don't know how it's going to be received, but it was intentionally done for that application, very broad use, easy, stable. Uh, people love it. It's just incredible. Uh, I've seen people do things with that board that I didn't even imagine. Hey, JD, I was out behind a boat. The other day, getting towed around, and I mean, we're talking breakneck speeds, even. But uh, that was kind of extreme. <laughs> but I would not have anticipated that. Big grin on their face. Look at what we did. 
I, we get the photos and the stories, right? It's hilarious. So wow. the, mos- the monster really has a very broad appeal, stable. Uh, anyone can use it. Um, frankly, we do do a lot of um, outfitting for people that have, shall we say, uh, you know, rental aspects. They've rented out their cottage or something. They want that extra thing to add to their uh, customer's experience. Uh, that's a really good one from that point of view, like schools and so on. Mm-hmm. Then we have another one that's called the Beast, which is <laughs> kind of a similar profile, just a bit smaller, uh, like 11 feet. Uh, so the Monster and the Beast, we we did kind of play that up a bit at Halloween, so it was quite fitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go by. And, and then you could actually put a cooler or a dog or two people on the monster. It's that big. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? Good point. I should have brought that up myself, but thank you. You're right. Uh, I should add that people do a lot of trekking with with these. Uh, they can load it up with coolers, uh, live fishing wells. I mean, fishing platforms, uh, dual party. You know, husband, wife, uh, son, daughter, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Dog, as you say. Yep. <laughs> very, very. You can believe how many surfing dogs we have. Oh my goodness. Oh, I take uh, my dog all the time, and he's <clears throat> um, he's a golden doodle, so he weighs fifty pounds, and okay. he loves it. <clears throat> They, they do. It's incredible. Uh, I've seen it firsthand where, I mean, dogs are really intelligent and say, hey, or there's, there's some indication that they're going out for a ride. They go nuts, go pacing back and forth on the beach. They can't wait. Uh, like they're almost the first ones on the board. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's so neat that that, that um, the rider can share that with their, their little four-legged companion. Um, <laughs> it, that is a lot of fun. It so, is a lot of fun. With that in mind, uh, we did develop a, a thing we call the doggy pad, which someone can actually fasten to the end of, end of a board. Um, certainly when, it, when there's a hard board or inflatable, people like to preserve it, you know, and animals have claws. So that extra level of protection should they uh, embark on that journey with their four-legged friend just gives them an extra little spot mm-hmm. for their, uh, their, their guy to stand and maybe not... Uh, claw the board up so much in terms of cosmetic can't, mm-hmm. can't really hurt the board so much as yeah that's a nice segue into my next point which is oh. if you already have a paddle board in the family or in your <clears throat> scope of friends and you're you're thinking what can i get this person you know the best gifts they say are the ones that you always wanted but you might never buy yourself so yeah. what gear can you get for someone who's already a paddle boarder Time flies when you're having fun on Fresh Waves. It's time for us to take our first little break here. I'm your host, Bren Masson, and today we're talking with JD from Maui North. We'll be right back with the answer to that question of what kind of gear can you get for someone who already has a paddleboard right after this quick break. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Bren, host of Fresh Waves. You know, Fresh Waves is a broadcast and a podcast. If you'd like to share a story with us, or if you have something that you think we'd love to hear, then drop me a line. It's Bren at freshwaves.ca. Bren at freshwaves.ca. If you'd like to hear this broadcast and podcast again, go to our YouTube channel, Fresh Waves Radio. Now, back to the show. You know, the best gifts, they say, are the ones that you always wanted, but you might never buy yourself. So what gear can you get for someone who's already a paddleboarder? Uh, aftermarket stuff, of course, is is prevalent. Um, let's focus on some of the most common ones. When, when a person is buying a board package, which is a typical thing, uh, it comes packaged with all the accessories, uh, paddle, everything you need, really, paddle, leash, that type of thing. Okay, what's a leash for people who don't know about paddleboarding? Oh, yeah. Okay, the leash is, uh, it keeps you attached to the board. It's, it, it Velcro wraps around your, your ankle for the most part, and then it gets tied to a D-ring at the very back of the board. So should you wipe out, the board's not going to take off and, and leave you there. You're always basically connected to the board for safety. Mm-hmm. That's a really good thing to have, of it course. It really is. I yeah. must say, uh, on a windy day, yeah. you go one oh. way and the board goes the other, and it's almost impossible to catch up to it. So yep. you you need that. I call it a tether strap. You call it a leash. 
yes. tomato, tomato. Um, yeah. But you need that. It's it's really helpful. And someone said to me once, well, what happens if the board snaps back and hits you because it's tied to your ankle? I can honestly say I've never seen that happen. Not that it couldn't, no. but I've never seen it happen because <clears throat> the leash is usually long enough that uh, that doesn't happen. Yes, and typically they're coiled, so they have, shall we say, a certain spring and give to them. So, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we're not in, you know, Hawaii, for example, in the big <laughs> pounding surf. So, that the big kahuna. <laughs> exactly, as a, not usually a concern. Yeah, uh, and there are stories, of course. Yes, um, there are. <laughs> okay, but could, so you've got share. you were saying that that usually comes in the package. So, what would be yeah. the extra add-ons that a person could give as a gift? Um, paddles are very um, a, a common upgrade. Mm-hmm. So typically what you might get on an entry-level package might be an aluminum or a fiberglass paddle. Um, people really like to pick up the carbon paddles after the fact, whether like a one-piece. They're always adjustable for the most part, or three-piece depending on the board where you can actually break it down into smaller pieces and fit your uh, tighter compartments, board bag or whatever. So carbon paddles, uh, because they're lighter, um, people realize that, hey, after paddling uh, 2,000 strokes today, well, that was two tons of work. Uh, and I can make my work a lot better if it's a lighter paddle. Uh, so that's a really common one uh, for the most part. Uh, if it's an inflatable board, a lot of people, again, with their uh, first purchase, it comes with a, a manual pump that you you know inflate. Um, so you can get an electric pump. Those are really cool uh, because you can inflate uh, easily. You can be sitting there talking to your friends, drinking a beverage or something at the beach while your board's inflating, and it automatically cuts off at the right pressure. You don't have to worry about overinflating. And they can also deflate. Hmm. So, oh. so a person, let's say, who is spatially limited to some degree, like an apartment dweller or someone, it's really handy because an inflatable board you're inflating and deflating quite often mm-hmm. and and manually inflating it with the, the hand pump uh, takes three or four minutes but it's it's a bit of work it's a bit of a workout and it is a workout so you, you, that's how I <laughs> try to swing it in a positive way here's yeah. my workout for the day <laughs> is that what you do I mean do you inflate yours all the time or um, no I, I try not okay. to because the manual pump drives me crazy but I, I, that's one of the things I've got on my list is the electric pump. <laughs> now, do you need electricity cool. for that pump or can you plug it into your car? You can plug it into your cigarette lighter. Uh, some of the more advanced ones actually have a battery pack. They're uh, more expensive, of course, because you've got the lithium ion battery. But the neat thing about that, um, if you really want to spoil yourself, is they can inflate and deflate four boards on the same charge cycle. Wow. So. When, when, yeah, it's kind of neat. So if some say, group of friends are out there, hey, man, can I use your pump? The thing's not going to wind down before everybody's got their boards inflated. Um, and the de- deflation part is interesting, too. A lot of people don't realize that is that um, it can actually suck the air out of the board as well. So you vacuum bag your board, and especially if you're traveling down to the Caribbean or you're taking it on a plane, you want that um, board pretty much tight as possible. So will it fit into your extra luggage, which right. is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, that helps. So those, are, those two really are very common upgrades. They're not overly expensive, but they're very well received at the other end. Let's put it that way from a gift-giving sense. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's an easy purchase, but we still consult, again, um, size, type of rider, blade shape on a, a paddle are really different. Mm-hmm. So there's the barn door version, which is really broad. Um, uh, shall we say cumbersome and then there's the ones that are more tailored for um, you know, a faster blade stroke wave work um, all sorts of different things right mm-hmm. um, at the same time let's let's take another level where people okay listen I've been riding for a season or two really love it what else can I do with this um, well I mean certainly we offer lessons and, and, and rentals so a person could make an acquisition that way if it was a, a stocking stuffer uh, we have a $100 um, gift card that we're hoping people will jump on because it doesn't cost anybody, it doesn't cost any money to get the gift card. Um, with this, it's a promotion we're doing 
just to celebrate our 52nd year in the trade. That's um, how long we've been around. So it's it's part of a campaign we ran in the 70s. We're doing it again, just kind of a retro thing. Uh, and, and just to celebrate all our clients and, and in a view of what's going on too in this crazy world right now, uh, you know, family time and celebration is, is really, really important. So mm-hmm. we'd like to accent that. So yes, anyone that wants to buy, put, pop by and pick up one of these um, little hundred dollar gift cards is more than welcome and we'll send it out in the mail or whatever. Yeah. You can have as many as you want. Just put them in everybody's stocking. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a great idea. It is. Uh, and they can also, you know, pre purchase, you know, rental programs or, or 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 lesson packages too if they wish. Now do you have um a lesson package where you will come to them or do they always have to go to one of your locations? No, we've we've been doing it uh we take off in our caravans, we call them, um, to people's destinations. Uh, yeah, that is a lot of fun because if it's if, if we're going to someone's cottage or we're invited uh, in that, it's a really special experience um, to being invited to someone's home, of course. And, uh, and they're very comfortable in that regard because they know the waters and they're there with their friends and make a day of it. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun for us for too. Mm-hmm. We get a, we get out of the shop, <laughs> and. Uh, but we do have destinations as well, uh, right across Canada and elsewhere. That's uh, really that, cool. That people that can, people can engage in. A lot of them we we shut down, of course, during COVID. It just was no sense um, trying to keep those open. It was far too restrictive. And right. But things was... are opening up now, and the world is opening up. So, yep. I mean, if somebody even falls in love with paddleboarding, I know when you get to some of the resorts, um, you go to rent a paddleboard, and they're just awful. The padding's yep. falling off. You're sliding off the board. Again, you don't get a good paddle boarding experience. Um, and if you really love the sport, then maybe you are looking at an inflatable that you can check in at the plane and take with you. And you know that you always have a piece of equipment that you're going to enjoy. Even if you're gone for a week, it's nice to have it to enjoy it for five days instead of cursing the, the, the equipment that you're standing on <laughs> <laughs> or paddling behind because you can't stand on it because it's in such bad repair. But uh, so true. Yeah, you know, it's nice to take your stuff with you sometimes. Yeah, and it's important. I guess. I mean, our gear is long lasting. It's designed to to fit that longevity, which I think people should expect. Um, I'm not fond of the stuff I see out there in the market. Um, that is very poorly made, for example. Um, we just know that's not going to deliver the experience a person. Uh, A person wants. Now, you know what? I have to ask you about the kayak seat because Mm -hmm. I thought that was just the coolest thing. And I did buy one last year. And as an add-on to a board, it's a great Christmas gift because it really does open up a whole new world. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I I forgot to mention that one. That is uh, a a very common thing we make people aware of when they come. And uh, we designed that a few years ago. We weren't sure how it would be received, but now you can see it's quite common if you're shopping around. Like, oh, let's do a kayak seat. Um, they work great. Quality, again, is another aspect, depending on the lumber support and how things designed. And not every sub-kayak seat will fit a board. Um, right. You can get up with a seat, but it may not have the fittings. Right. Um, so on our boards, we, we added the particular D-rings and the locations necessary for extra gear like that. So you can position that kayak seat anywhere within a certain range mm-hmm. um, and adjust the lumbar support or the rake of the, the angle for your back. Uh, very useful tool, not expensive, They're like 50 bucks, 55 bucks. Um, again, we weren't sure how they'd be received, but extremely popular item because it crosses over into not only the stand-up paddle portion, but let's say you're out there and you're, you've had a long session and maybe you didn't time it correctly and the wind came up and you're tired. Well, you can just sit down on your board, kind of partly lounge in it and 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 paddle home or let the wind push you around, which is kind of fine. You do a bit of a rest. Yep. Um, yep. And speaking of that, um, I'm glad you're pulling all these triggers because I'm not thinking about all those things, but we do have a um, basically what we call a four-piece paddle where – it's fully adjustable. You use it like a normal stand-up paddle, but you can actually take the handle end off and put uh, the other blade portion in. So now you basically have a kayak paddle for that kind of 
the application. Right? So if you've got oh, some extra kayaks around, good. that is cool. Um, so if you have got the kayak seat and you feel like, hey, I'm going to kayak my board using that kind of paddle stroke, it's it's already there built into the paddle. That's pretty cool. Wow, that's really cool. I like that. Because yeah. I have been out before where I, I do a lot of photography. And oh, if, if I'm out on the lake and I see the otters or whatever – wildlife there is around i prefer often to be seated where it's a little more stable and i can control the board so that i'm not shifting and moving all over the place and i've actually been sitting on my board where i've come within two feet of a loon and i've let them swim to me not me interfering with their life they've actually come over my direction and said who are you and what are you doing in my space (laughs) Now, isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You touched on another aspect of the um, echo sensitive aspect of paddleboarding, which is getting into those quiet areas. And that, what a great story that is. But the getting in those quiet areas, the shallow draft of a stand up paddleboard gets you into spots that you wouldn't even get to in a canoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, or again, if you're an avid fisherman or sports person, or in your case, a nature photographer. Getting in that little spot that you may not have been able to access before with a boat or other kind of, you know, floating log kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, look at the experience you had. I mean, how common is that? Getting a loon that close. It's not very That's common, incredible. but it's really cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are great. Who, yeah. who doesn't know the sound of the loon? Wow. Yeah. Well, right they're kind of creepy Fun. looking close up with their red eyes, but yeah, they, they, they are. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I was thinking of that right now. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for telling us all about paddleboarding this morning and some of the options. I think you've laid out some really cool options for people. I've made a couple of notes myself. Paddle that converts into a kayak paddle. Got to write that one down. The electric pump. My list is getting longer as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that it's fun to think of the summertime and to to think outside the box for some Christmas gift giving. Well, thank you so much for calling. Uh, We are delighted to uh, assist in any way, shape or form, Um, whether it's covert, uh, secretly moving boards around, getting them in the right hands. That, again, is a lot of fun Mm -hmm. uh, come Christmas. Um, And here we have uh, one of our models here is get more Chris for your Kringle at Christmas. (laughs) Right? So uh, value price stuff designed to ride, uh, and it won't, take, won't let you down. They, again, the whole thing about the experience is, uh, like a lot of our clients are, are all referral. We have 150,000 clients worldwide. Uh, wow. We don't, occup- we don't occupy a huge web presence, don't post things. Uh, we just have great clients, and, and we appreciate them, so... And that speaks volumes for your business. People don't come back if they're not satisfied. And if they keep coming back, then they're satisfied customers who are happy with the products that they've um, been sold and the the direction that they get. They really like that. Yeah. And and honestly, we've been blessed through all of this, of course. And uh, our clients are a treasure. It's 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 life stories that we share as much as anything. It's not just selling stuff, but we take the time with our clients to, to get to know what they need. And um, mm-hmm. the trade-off is, is probably some of the best stories that I could ever come across. <laughs> it's the joy, joy of running this business for sure. So how do people get a hold of you? Um, <clears throat> old school. They can pick up the phone, which is really great. Uh, 905-751-7205 is our direct line. Uh, it is a busy shop, so we encourage people, hey, leave a message or text. works really well. Uh, I think visit us at uh, MauiNorth.ca. We are definitely a Canadian company. Good. Um, we are not an online store. Go figure that. So uh, be ready for that experience because it's a little different. Um, we really enjoy the consultative approach, getting people the right ride. And uh, it, I, I realize maybe some people might know what they want. That's great. Um, but we do cater to the person that, um, um, really wants to get the right gear the first time. Mm-hmm. Not and I will encourage any of the listeners who think, wow, this is a really cool idea that I've never thought of before. <coughs> I would say, go to the showroom, see what's there, 
you can lie these boards on the floor and stand on them if you like. Um, you know, you just, you can feel them, you can see them, you get a much better idea of what JD's talking about and, and how it would come together. And, you know, you are spending an, a little bit of change, so you want to make sure that you've got a board that's going to do what you would like it to do. And uh, I can't say enough good things about my experience with Maui North, so I hope that the listeners will uh, give you a call, JD, and... Uh, Check out some paddle boarding. Brenda, thank you so much. I appreciate your kind words. <laughs> Glad you had a good experience here. Uh, and, uh, well, that's what we stand for, for sure. Um, we guarantee it, as a matter of fact. Our, our self-satisfaction guarantee, I might add, is specifically that. If you are not 100% lit and grinning like a Cheshire cat on your board, you can trade it back in, full value applied to something else of equally greater value. So you're never stuck ever with a wrong purchase decision when it comes to that and that can be especially helpful come christmas time or gift giving where uh honey i i I wanted a different color totally down with that that's totally cool yeah our our product range is so broad that um that can be done but honestly in in all this time of business that offer has been standing for what five decades now now we have yet to have a single client uh, take us up on that offer. But it's wow. a standing offer nonetheless. Wow. We want you riding, and we want you riding on the right gear. Uh, again, that first time, um, certainly that could expand into, into extra gear and, and accessories, as you mentioned. Uh, but that comes with time and experience, right? Okay. You've been most kind to reach out to us. Thank you so much for uh, this opportunity, and, and always great speaking with you, Brenda, and sharing some of your stories, which are amazing. <laughs> Uh, and yours to too. Those. I think well, in in April we'll do a precursor to summertime sup paddle boarding, and we will talk all the stories that there are to talk about in terms of you know what you can do and touring and yeah, just fun exploration of this wonderful province of Ontario. So uh, we'll save that for April. But for okay. now, happy holidays to you and your family. I wish you the merriest of Christmases. And uh, happy paddle boarding. Brenda, thank you so much. And, and, and the same right back at you. Have a happy and joyful holiday. Thanks a lot, J.D. Well, that's it for Fresh Waves today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. It was fun talking about summertime and thinking of beaches and sunshine and open lakes. Ontario is a wonderful place to spend your summer. I hope you all consider some of the unique items that we've talked about today. Remember that if you are doing summer activities, a life jacket is always a wonderful addition to anybody's roster of summertime equipment. A good life jacket is more comfortable to wear, and if it's more comfortable to wear, chances are you're going to wear it, and it is a really good thing to wear. If it's underneath your boat seat or underneath your the tie downs on your paddle board and you need it, it's really difficult to get to. So I always encourage people to wear their life jackets when they're on the water. Be safe. It's always the best way to be. Hope you've enjoyed the show. If you would like to hear this show again, or if you'd like to hear another show about paddle boarding, we do have another show that we did with JD in the summertime. So you can go to our YouTube channel, that's Fresh Waves Radio, and uh, search out the paddle boarding podcast that we did in the summertime. I hope everybody has a fabulous day. Thanks for joining us here on Fresh Waves, and we'll catch you again next week on Fresh Waves. Have a great day, everyone.